What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new around here, we're just meeting I'm Tony Fuentes and in this channel I'll do a lot of tutorials for video and photo editing. So if you like those things, consider subscribing or just stick around to see what it's all about. Now today we're turning to the Edit Act series with a profile from Creative Ryan. Now this profile was suggested by Oliver in my DMs on Instagram. Just remember that if you want me to analyze or break down a certain style, just put it down in the comment sections in YouTube, just because I check more the, com the comments in YouTube than the Instagram DMs. So having said that, let's jump into it. Now remember that the purposes of these tutorials isn't for you guys to steal uh, the style from certain creators, it's more so so you can learn how to train the eye to look how to achieve certain looks and to dominate Lightroom so you can further along create your very own presets and also to nail down your own personal style and of course how to learn how to post edit your images. So that's the purpose of these tutorials, not to steal their styles. So you know how this works guys, we're gonna jump into Instagram, break down his style, and then we're gonna go into Lightroom, create a preset and see how it performs on different scenarios. So first of all, let's jump into Instagram and check out his style. So this is Creative Ryan on Instagram. If you wanna go and support him, he's a great content creator once again, and takes a lot of shots, a lot of lifestyle and urban shots in particular a lot of portraits of himself and then if we click on the link over here we can jump into his shop where you can buy his presets his slots and his transitions remember that he shoots a lot of video in particular for uh, clients for music videos so his transitions are very famous and also he has his youtube channel over here creative ryan once again where he uploads very nice and very informative tutorials and vlogs now his way in video in particular is very, it's a very nice and soothing and calming way to transmit messages. He talks to the camera like if you were there, if you were her friend, just chilling out. He has a very nice way in which he communicates. Now if you scroll down, he has very nice tutorials, very informative tutorials, but also we can see that his homies, YC Imaging is a great photographer once again. And then Christian Matagrab over here, well, he doesn't upload anymore, but he I've said it before, he is my favorite creator, the one who inspired me to pursue this career because, well, I'm not a photographer originally, I'm uh, an architect, I studied architecture, I worked in architecture, and then I decided to change my life just a bit. So, Christian Matagrab is one of the people that inspired me to pursue this career. Yeah, but enough about that, let's just dive into the breakdown first. If we scroll down, we can see that his style is very consistent throughout the time that he's been uploading. Now the first step to break down his style is how he shoots his photographs with which gear. He shoots most, mostly with Canon. He shoots with the 1DX Mark II, Mark III, and more so recently with the Canon R. He does use the Canon R, the R6, and the R5. And in particular, he shoots with prime lenses. So he shoots with a 16mm 2.8 packing lens, RF, then a 24mm, 1.4, 35mm 1.4 and 100mm 2.8 macro. So as you can see he shoots basically with prime lenses in particular for photo. And for video he sometimes uses a zoom lens for his vlogs but normally he shoots with prime lenses just to achieve that very crisp and very sharp image and that very shallow depth of field to give his images this very isolated look in respect to the background. So that's the thing that we have to remember. Now straightforward jumping into his images, one thing that I can notice over here is that straightforward very nice contrast that he has. He has those pure blacks, they're not raised or faded out in, in any manner. You can see that the blacks are completely in intertwined with the black that we have in the interface of Instagram. And then the whites, well, the whites are pure white. So his image is a very contrasty look in that manner. We have pure whites and pure blacks, and then we're losing some information in the shadow. As we can see, he's crushing the shadows, so we have some loss of information over here and therefore we have that very nice contrasty look. Now his images, as we can see, are very clean, completely clean, we don't have any film grain or any noise added in post-edition. Yeah, very contrasty look, and it's a very stylized and very nice look. Now we're looking at his style, it really reminds me of two profiles that we've already broken down. First of all, Alan Palander, architecture, urban, lifestyle photography, he shoots a very contrasty look, just like him, and then Black Paris, which is basically a lifestyle, uh, account which shoots a lot of black and white almost black and white with the exception of the warm tones That's something that he does as well. He desaturates basically everything minus the warm tones So if we scroll down his style is very contrasty It basically repeats itself throughout his feed and as you can see everything is desaturated minus the oranges and the reds which composed skin tones and everything other in the image that has those 
tones. Everything else, including the greens, for example, are completely desaturated and they're basically black and white and gone. And then the blues are also completely desaturated. We have no information in the blues. In most of the cases, sometimes he just brings them back ever so slightly um, when in particular we have a subject with uh, a blue shirt or something like that or the sky is a very big part of the image then he brings back just a little bit of the blue so it's not completely black and white again in this one we can see obviously how he desaturates all the greens and yellows and then the blues are almost gone they're almost gone just leaving the warmish tones on the skin and every single part of the image that has a warmish tone is just kept just nice and saturated and also he alters them just a little bit in camera calibration so they have this very orangey uh, color to them. Yeah, as I said, in some cases he just brings back a bit of the blues or bring, brings back a bit of a certain color depending on the situation and in what he wants to make emphasis. For example here, in the eye he wants to bring back a bit of the blues, otherwise well, it would be a grey eye, he brings back a bit of the blues and the aquas just so this image has a bit more of a sense to it. Once again, green's completely gone, we're only left with those warmish tones in the skin, very nice tones as well, very reminiscent of Canon's colors, but also we, I think he does make some a little bit of emphasis in camera calibration to bring them up just a little bit more so they pop ever so slightly. Uh, above from every other color in the warmish palette. Yeah, again, once again, very contrasty look, almost black and white with the exception of the warmish tones. And if we keep scrolling down, everything just basically repeats itself. Uh, everything completely desaturated minus a warmish tones. Greens are completely gone. Blues are completely gone once again. We're just left with the oranges and the reddish tones in the saturation. Yeah, so I think I have everything I need to replicate his style. What we want is very nice contrast by having pure blacks and pure whites crushing the shadows, pulling down the highlights, we have a bit of information in the sky. Then we want to desaturate basically every single color minus the warmish tones. And then in camera calibration, we want the skin tones to really start to pop up towards the orangey tones. So let's jump into Lightroom and edit this. Just another note before we jump into Lightroom is that this preset that we're gonna create is gonna be added, well, it is added to the Edelike preset pack link down below the desktop and the mobile versions in case you want to support me. In those preset packs, we have all the presets that we've created throughout the series, including Alan Palander, Peter McKinnon, Monaris, Pau Clavero, Black Paris, and more than 36 presets in case you want to support me and check it out. Also, there's a link to my shop where I sell all my personal presets and LUTs that I use every single day on my Instagram feed and in my videos. So having said that, let's jump into Lightroom. Okay guys, once in Lightroom I have all these images, I have to repeat that none of them are lifestyle or urban photography portraits, basically because it's not my field. I'm just gonna show you how to replicate the color grading part. Let's start off by editing this one of my friend Kevin. And first of all, what I want to achieve is that very contrasty look. So let's start off with the basic corrections. Remember white balancing, exposure and contrast are the values that we're gonna leave at zero. So they're not gonna be included in the preset so we can adjust the values depending on each photograph and each lighting scenario. So. First of all, highlights, we're going to bring them down to bring back a lot of information that we have in the brightest parts of our image, particularly the sky, all the way down to minus 50s, minus 55 I settled with. Then the shadows, I'm going to pull them up just to achieve a bit more information in the dark parts of the image. Then we're going to bring them down. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to bring it up all the way down to the plus 45. Then whites, we're not going to move them, we're just going to leave them like that. But blacks, we are going to crush them, bring them down, so we have a very contrasty and punchy image. Okay, next up, texture and clarity. Remember, we didn't see a lot of texture or clarity added. We're just going to add it ever so slightly to a plus 5% in each of them. As we can see, if we go to extreme texture, it just becomes uh, over, over sharp. Not, not what we're looking for. We're just going to go with a plus 5. And clarity, just a bit too contrasty for my taste. Just leave it at 5. Then, vibrance and saturation. Um, yeah, we're just going to desaturate a bit of the general image. Then we're going to desaturate all the colors in the edge cell. So, just gonna go with a negative five or seven, something like that. In the saturation, vibrance, just gonna leave it like that. Now, if you don't know the difference between saturation and vibrance, I already made a video about it. I just link it up here in the cards. It's a short, so it's under 60 seconds. So you can understand the differences between these tools. Now in the tone curve, we're not gonna go too deep into the RGB channels. In this case, we're just gonna jump into the basic point tone curve and just create that punchy style. So create a point in the shadows, point in the highlights, just bring the highlights up just over the diagonal, just like that, and pull the blacks and the shadows just a little bit down. Just like that, we have a very contrasty feel to this image now. Now the blacks, we're not going to move them, we're not going to raise them to fade them up, just going to leave it at pure blacks, and also the whites, we're not going to pull them down, just leave them at pure whites. Now, if you want a more in-depth tutorial on 
the tone curve or just to understand what the RGB channels do, just check out the video up here in the cards and you can uh, really nail down and dominate this tool. So that's the contrasty part. With Y on our keyboard, we can see what we're doing and we're just basically achieving that very nice contrast that uh, Ryan has in his photos. Next up, the color grading. So we're gonna jump down to the HSL and it's gonna be a very simple edit, guys. We're not gonna move basically any hue here. We're just gonna go to the saturation tab in HSL and we're gonna desaturate basically everything. Look, magentas and purples, we want them towards the negatives. We don't want anything of those colors. Then blues, just gonna go all the way down to the minus 90s minus 95 in this case. Now for this image, as we can see, the sweater of Kevin is the main color of this entire image. So for purposes of creating the preset, I am gonna desaturate the blues, but for certain scenarios, I am gonna bring back a bit of the blues like he did when he had, let's say a denim jacket or maybe a bit of sky in the image, just bring back a bit of the blues, but normally it's just gonna desaturate them completely. So I'm just gonna desaturate it completely to create the preset. Then we're gonna bring them back depending on the specific scenarios. Now greens as well, all the way down to the minus 100. And then the yellows control a lot of parts of the greens of the images. Just gonna bring them down just around the minus, uh, let's say around the minus 60 will be enough. Then reds, oranges, those are the two colors that we're not gonna move at all. So now we're gonna go all the way down to camera calibration to achieve those very orangey and rich skin tones. So sharpening, we don't want any poor sharpening. Then post crop vignetting will depend on each scenario and grain. We don't see any grain on his images. His images are very clean and very sharp. Okay, down to camera camera elevation. Now what we want to do is achieve those orangey skin tones that he adds and complements the Canon colors. So first of all, just the hue of the red primary. We're just gonna move it to the positive towards the oranges, just a bit, not too much. We don't want it to be a bit too green. We don't want it to be too purple. Just move it up ever so slightly, two or five percent, I think, is gonna be fine. Then the greens, I like to move the greens to really make emphasis on the red parts or blemishes in the skin. So let's say we move to the positives, towards the magentas, just gonna add it ever so slightly. We don't want it to go to the other side, just gonna add ever so slightly up. And then the saturation, just put it up, not too much, don't wanna make him completely orange, just gonna go slightly to the positives, just like that. And then the blues, Again, um, if you don't know what camera calibration does, basically we are altering the basic colors which are composing every single pixel on our image. Uh, the RGB, which is the red, the green, and the blue. Now, if you alter one of the colors, you're basically altering every single color on the image which is composed with a less or a majority part of that color. Let's say we're altering the blues. We're altering basically all the colors around the blues in the tone curve or the color wheel, but also primarily we're alterating the alternate color or the opposite color in the color wheel. So the opposite from the blues are the warmish tones in the oranges and yellow. So for example, if we take the blue primary towards the negatives, we can see that all the warmish tones really start to pop up. To the other side, we're taking them towards the greenish tones. So we can also desaturate it and we can see that we're affecting largely the bluish tones. Let's say we bring back a bit of the blues over here. We're affecting the bluish tones, but also we're affecting the opposite in the color wheel, which is the yellows. Okay, having explained that, let's bring down a bit of the blue primary towards the negative so we have a bit more of an orangey skin tone palette and then just pull up a bit of the saturation slightly. We're just making very subtle changes just to achieve very nice skin tones. So here we have the skin tones. If we click on and off the camera calibration, we can see that off the skins are a bit pale and now if we activate it, they're a bit more rich, a bit more orangey. We don't want to go to the extreme just because we don't want very exaggerated skin tones. We want them natural, but having that very nice and warmish tone to them. So this is the preset. Basically, it's complete. It's a very simple edit compared to the video from last week. So I'm just going to save this preset and then I'm just going to continue editing this image to make it a bit more accurate to what I want to achieve. So I'm going to go to the left panel, hit the plus sign, create preset. And remember that white biasing exposure and contrast, we want them at zero. Also effects, we don't want any effects. And and also, we don't want any color grading or previously known as split toning because he doesn't add any tint to the shadows, to the midtones, or to the heights. It's a very natural look in that sense. So, just gonna create it. And now, for this image, what I would do is, yeah, bring back a bit of the blues just to not take them out completely out of the equation and a bit of the aquas. Now, the image is looking quite nice. You can see that before and after we have that very nice contrast, that desaturation, and those very nice warmish tones. Now let's see how the preset performs in other images. Okay, so this image in Tokyo that I've edited so many times, let's see how the preset performs. And it's gonna look, yeah, it's looking quite nice. You can see the before and after. 
and just the image is acquiring this very nice contrast to it, very punchy feel. And then of course we have the desaturation of all the bluish and purplish magenta casts that we have in the sign over here. And then the reds are really start to pop up a lot more because of those changes that we did in camera calibration. Okay, so let's see if we nail down the skin tones, particularly when we have other type of skins. For example, here we have Olin, a friend of mine that rides a lot of bikes, he's very young. But let's see his skin, which is a bit more of a white skin. Let's see how it performs with the preset. Again, in this case, we have uh, the, the grass really reflecting on his skin. That's why he's very warm, but he's very uh, pink-like skin tone. So let's put the preset. As we can see, it's already added into the area preset pack over here, Creative Ryan. We're gonna click on it, and immediately we can see that the greens are completely gone from the image. They're completely desaturated all the way down to the black and whites. And uh, that's what we saw in his images. And then the blues also desaturated from the shirt. Again, I will bring them back just a little bit. But then we can see those skin tones. Yeah, it's working quite nice. They're not too harsh. They're just working perfectly uh, to what we want. Another image of that day of my friend Patricio just jumping. Just gonna put wide proportion over here, 21 by nine. Just to make emphasis on the subject and just crop out all this that I'm not interested in having. It's looking better. Now let's see how the preset performs. And in this case, yeah, again, it's desaturating everything. We see those very nice skin tones start to appear, but then we have this black and white sky. Again, what I would do in this case is bring back a bit of the blues, a bit of the aquas, just a bit so the sky is a bit more vivid, but not completely saturated, just a bit more vivid so we know that it's a blue sky. And there we have it before and after with Alt and the Y on our keyboard, we can see the vertical compar comparison. Yeah, it's looking quite nice. Okay, so that's for harsh sunlight. Normally, Ryan doesn't shoot in harsh sunlight, he shoots more in overcast days or in shadows. So let's see how it performs in a bit more of a grim situation. For example, here we have this portrait of my dog Lupita. Yeah, in the shadows, very nice. We're gonna see how the preset performs with all the greens in the shadows and very diffuse light. So let's apply the preset, pull up a bit of the exposure, and it's looking quite nice actually. You can see those deep greens because of the desaturation and the warmish tones on her fur and on the leaves in the ground. It really starts to pop up and it's looking quite nice actually. Okay, then next we have this portrait of myself. It was a very cold day in spring, but yeah, it's spring, so we have those very vivid greens that I don't like at all. So let's see how the preset performs. With Wire here, we can see what we've done. and basically eradicates the greens, makes them a lot more deep, like if it were foliage or a forest in winter. And then we have those oranges really start to pop up. In this case, my skin tones are a bit too green, so I would correct the tint overall, just put it towards the purples just a bit. Yeah, and temperature a bit down. Yeah, and the image is a lot better now. Okay, this image of this film roll over here, let's see how the preset performs here. Yeah, and it's looking quite awesome, guys. Actually, you can see the before and after. You can see how those greens disappear and we have a very moody look, which is very <laughs> useful for these types of shots with a very shallow depth of field like he uses, but also it would be very important for uh, to achieve those urban landscapes or urban portraits that he uses. Sadly, I don't have a lot of portraits in urban scenes, but we have this image which we can apply the preset Let's up up a bit of the exposure. Let's apply the preset now. Bit of exposure and it's looking very nice, very nice image, very punchy contrast that we have. And then we have that complete desaturation of all bluish tones that we had over here. Yeah, it's looking quite nice actually. How about this one? Let's see how the preset performs. Very desaturated, just what we were looking for maybe in this case, just bring back a bit of the blues just to make this backpack just a little bit more vivid. So just bring back a bit of the blues, just ever so slightly, just like that and it's looking quite nice. So that's a very quick edit, a very quick preset. Just remember that my photos are nothing in comparison to Ryan's photos. I don't even shoot the same types of shots. Uh, I shoot mostly street photography or landscape photography or nature photography. He shoots more of portrait photography and lifestyle photography. So it's a very different category. That's why uh, my images aren't very similar to his, but at least the color grading, I think we're quite, we really nailed it down. And just a reminder that this preset is already added into the Air Drag preset pack, which will be linked down below. In case you want to support me, there we have all the presets that we've created throughout the series, including Peter McKinnon, Alan Palander, Monaris, Pau Clavero, Luis Glass, and all of those people. A lot of presets, more than 36 presets we've already created. 
to this date and the list is just going to keep growing throughout this series. Remember to go and support Ryan in his YouTube, his Instagram and everywhere. He's a great creator, a great content creator, great photographer and filmmaker. So go and support him, share some love. And for me guys, if you did like the video or found it helpful, just give it a like. It actually makes a difference. Consider subscribing. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one. Rebooting Lightroom because I have it in Spanish. Meanwhile, I just admire the only Canon lens I will ever have. And it's just a cup. Bloody hell, Harry! Harry Potter! Mary, it's Frodo Baggins! Hello, Frodo! What's the meaning of this?